As promised, my friends, this is the explanation of how cash lines work and how the caches affect your program. So here, in C format, we have a structure. We'll just call it list. And you see we have a pointer to the next item in the list, a pointer to the previous item in the list that only applies to a doubly linked list, and the data in the structure is an unsigned 64-bit integer. This is really just for kicks. Um, I, I don't really... Uh, I don't really have this quite right, but just for the sake of argument, um, we're not going to uh, try to make this too complex. Just accept numbers as they are. And you see over here, this is memory, the memory layout of your singly and doubly linked lists. And then over here, these are cache line states. We'll go over these in a minute. So <clears throat> over here, you have a singly linked list. Um, you've got pointer to the next item, data zero, pointer to the next item, data one, and the data is just 64-bit integer. So we're kind of assuming that all of these things are eight byte pointers, 64-bit. So next, data zero and so on. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can see here, um, it's fairly obvious that one cache line holds eight of these items. So eight of these eight byte items is a 64 byte cache line. Now, a doubly linked list is a little different. So whereas with the singly linked, we have next, zero, next, one, and so on. And the next just sort of point to the next ones. Um, in a doubly linked list, we have the ability to go backwards. This requires carrying an extra pointer. Next, previous zero. Next, previous one. Next, previous two, and so on. You can already see the data density is significantly lower. Where here, we can store four data items and four pointers. Here, we store more pointers at the expense of data items, so in the worst case, we have two. And in a better case, we have three. That's probably the best case, actually. But not four. Now, the way that this actually plays out inside of a CPU, you can see it right here and also right here. This is the tag of a cache line. The tag is just most of an address. Basically, it's just where in memory, what part of memory do we have cached? And to save you the technical trouble, because you don't really care, I promise, I've just written down memory addresses, um, as in these numbers you see in red. These, This would be sort of the address for the sake of this. So 96 is just an arbitrary number, it doesn't matter. This is the cache line's current state. 96, and this is eviction. So the green check means that this line is not marked as evicted. This line is an active cache line. CPU needs to access something between 96 and uh, whatever 96 plus seven or so is. Um, that's what you're gonna get. It'll look at this cache line and that's where it will access the data. Now, we don't have zero in the cache. So the process of the cache dealing with this missing address, no, it's not tagged anywhere, is it selects a line for eviction. We'll leave the technical aspects of that out of this discussion for now. It's too much trouble, it's not worth it. So this line is chosen for eviction. It gets marked as evicted. The red lines mean eviction. So it still maybe has, has the tag, but it's marked as evicted. The CPU knows that it can't use that line anymore and that it's available. And of course, it's being evicted because we need to load something that's not in the cache. So this is the eviction. Then immediately, it loads this from memory into the cache. Yes, there are levels of cache. We're ignoring all of those complex technical details because all you need to learn is these fundamentals. It, levels of cache kind of work the same way, except further levels are bigger. So we need to load this here, these 64 bytes, into this cache line. That's represented by this green. And you see now the tag has changed to the starting address here for this eight items, and the line is no longer evicted. So now we've loaded our four next pointers and our four pieces of data. Then these colors represent the CPU going through and touching them while the algorithm runs through the list. 
So what happens is we go to the first item, there's a next pointer and data zero, the CPU does something with the data, next pointer jumps over here, does something with the data, next pointer jumps over here, does something with the data, next pointer, and so on. Now, once it runs off the edge here, we've already touched all of these, this next pointer right here points to eight. We don't have eight in the cache. We only have zero through seven tagged in the cache here. Starting at zero, and there's eight items, start, start numbering at zero, the end is seven. That's what these numbers represent. So zero through seven's here. The next pointer tells us we need eight. So the next load is gonna have to load eight. Well, we load entire lines at a time. So what's gonna happen, and in a normal CPU, you wouldn't necessarily evict this line, but for simplicity's sake, we're evicting this line just because we don't wanna complicate this. So we evict the line we just worked on. Now we load eight through 15 in, in place of zero through seven here. So we're evicting old data from the cache based on things like least recently used or whatever. And then as we move through things, we invalidate more cache lines and reload them with new data, which is a slow process. This is the fundamental reason that caches matter and that writing your program to tune for caches matters. Now, a doubly linked list, which notoriously is what Rust offers in its standard library, has two pointers instead of one for each item in the list. That's the orange thing here. And it kind of works the same way. In fact, you'll notice that these diagrams are suspiciously similar, with one exception. This is a doubly linked list being worked with in RAM, or in cache, and this is the RAM. So we take the line from whatever it was, invalidate it, load it with this new cache line size chunk of memory, and now we have next previous first data item, next previous second data item, next previous, and we start working on it. Now, the same coloring here is in effect here. So we're working with next, previous, zero. Okay, well, we're gonna go to the next item. So next, and then we do something with that data. Next, same as the singly linked list. If we needed to later, or if the algorithm had some reason to go backwards, and we can use the previous to find our way back and that's the point of a doubly linked list, is that you can go in both directions infinitely uh, until you at least get to the head or tail of the list. However, we've only worked with two data items. Now we've got a next previous, and we need to touch uh, data item two. We're not messing with this next pointer yet. The next pointer here, well, it actually points over to nine, not eight. But we need eight because the next access is going to try to touch data two to do something with it here. So we're going to invalidate all this. And like I said, this isn't exactly how it would work. You would actually keep this line. But we're going to invalidate a cache line and then load the next cache line worth of memory in place. Now, just for the sake of argument here, let's pretend like the eviction didn't actually get this out of the cache. Both of these are in the cache at the same time. Because of the way that a doubly linked list works, you've got this gap here and so on, and, and D2 here breaks across cache lines. So we do something with data two, we read the next pointer, and boom, here we are. Do something with data three, and it just keeps going. The ultimate problem is that if we don't need these previous pointers, they're just making the structure a lot bigger to the point that we can only touch five items instead of eight items for the same amount of cache lines here. So that means that we're going to be spending um, a lot more time evicting and loading cache lines from lower or further up caches or RAM than we otherwise would. So tailoring your data structure such that when you bounce around, you don't evict more cache lines than necessary, it makes a massive difference. Anything that's in the cache already is extremely fast. Think of cache like a rocket ship, you know, as far as speed. And then, you know, level two cache, level three cache and all that, think of it more like a, a jet plane, a car, and then RAM is uh, walking. RAM is walking where cache is a rocket ship. RAM, hundreds or thousands of times slower than the CPU cache, so if you can keep more stuff in this cache, then it's going to inherently be faster. Even if the stuff's scattered all over the place, as long as it's in the cache, 
in one of these tag lines, you're good to go. So this is why it's important to select your data structure very carefully. If I don't need the previous pointer of a doubly linked list, but I choose a doubly linked list because, well, maybe I'll need it later, who knows, what ends up happening is I now have much lower data density for potentially no gain. This is actually one of the things that I naively implemented early on in my C um, programming career um, because I needed to be able to, if I, for example, deleted an item. If you delete an item from a linked list, then one of these items, you need to be able to connect the next pointer of, say, say we're deleting data one here, okay? You need to be able to connect this next pointer directly to data two's unit and then throw away NP data one. The problem is, how do you do that if you're on data one and you want to delete data one and you don't have a previous pointer? Well, the naive way is a doubly linked list. Now I can go back and delete, you know, by connect this to this. And then obviously I also have to connect this back to this. And once I've done this pointer connection around the item I'm going to delete, then I free it up. But the problem is, this is inefficient because of the previous pointers, because they're not actually necessary. If you're iterating through this linked list, then what you're going to end up doing is you need to be able to access the previous, but you always have access to the next. So what you do is use a singly linked list here, right? And instead, if I want to delete data one, what I do is I maintain a previous pointer variable. And then when I touch this, the previous is null. But then everything after that, the previous is the one I was just using. So I maintain one step back in a variable somewhere. So if I want to delete data one, I have a pointer to data zero. But now all I have to do is connect this to this and then free this. It's less work. It gives you more stuff in the cache and it doesn't waste a bunch of extra space here and extra time. So you're running less instructions because you're connecting a lot less pointers, and you can fit eight items instead of five in the same amount of memory. And that means you can fit eight items in two cache lines instead of five, which means less cache line evictions, which means faster execution. That is how cache lines work. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.